Hello guys, welcome to our channel. In this episode, we'll be discussing about evaluation and management or the ENM and the types of service. I am the medical coding guy. In this two-part episode, we'll delve into the core principles of ENM coding, demystify the rules and documentation requirements, and provide you with practical tips and strategies to optimize your coding accuracy, and also to prepare you for the CPC exam. There are three key steps for your successful coding for ENM. First is the type of service. All right. So again, you need to know what's the type of service the patient is here for, and next is going to be the time. So for the time, it depends on how much time the doctor had spent with the patient. All right. So this includes the non-face-to-face -face visit as well. All right. And then your MDM. Most of the ENM codes rely on time and MDM. First is your types of service. So these are the common types of service you can find on your exam or in the actual medical coding world. So you have an office visit, which is the most common in the exam. So whenever the doctor will plan all right, or treat the patient, they need to know what the patient has. So this usually happens in the doctor's office. So again, you have to determine whether the patient is new or established, all right? A new patient is one who has not received any professional services from the physician or any other physician of the same specialty who belongs to the same group practice within the past three years. So remember, if you forget, the difference between new and established, just remember new has three letters. So if it's the first time the patient is here, then it will be categorized as new. And if it's a follow-up, make sure that that patient was not seen, all right, within the three years time frame. Okay? Well, please take note of that. Now, for your office visit, we have your MDM or time, okay? So the codes from your 99202 up until 99205. All right, will fall under your category for a new patient. All right, so you just have to check the MDM or the time. All right, bonus if MDM or the time is given, because all you need to do is to compare it with your 99202 to 99205. If not, you have to calculate the MDM. All right, we'll discuss that on our next episode. So please take notes. You have your 99211 up until 99215 for your established patient. ENM coding this year in the past couple of years has been easier, all right, because you don't really have to calculate too much, all right? So like uh, what we have done in the past, all right, like you have to calculate the history and exam, all right? So please take note of that. Next will be your observation, all right? So for observation, you have to check these four key components here, okay? So first, check if it's the initial visit, all right. So take note, it includes the inpatient visit as well. So this is already combined into one code set. Unlike before that they uh, have their own, all right? like the observation, they have their own set of codes. But for now, for the 2023 version, all right, it's already combined into one code set. So all you need to do is to know all right, if this patient here is for initial visit from the doctor, or is it a follow-up or a subsequent visit or let's say it's the second third fourth day of the patient here it will fall under subsequent and then check that discharge date of service so for discharge date of service guys you have to check if it happens on the same date of service or if it happens on a different date of service so basically if let's say for example a patient was admitted on june 1 all right and suddenly, the patient was discharged on the same day. So it will fall under this category, 99234 to 99236, instead of you coding your initial visit plus your discharge uh, for the different date of service. You only code this 99234 to 99236 if the patient got discharged on the same date of admission. While your 99238 and 239, which is, by the way, a time-based code so it's very easy to calculate this just check the time the doctor had spent for the discharge service and only code this if the patient was admitted and discharged all right 
on a different date of service. So you have June 1, for example, for the admission date. Patient was discharged on June 5th. So for June 5th, you will be coding the codes here, 99238 to 99239, depending on, depending on how much time the doctor has spent with the patient. All right? So please take notes. All right. So let's now proceed to the next one. The next type of service is our consultation codes. Consultation is a type of ENM service provided at the request of another physician or other qualified healthcare providers. So please take note that if you're coding your consultation, don't get confused with this versus your office visit. So there are two types of consultation code sets you can use, all right, depending on that type of service, all right? So please take note that for your consultation, you have these three R's. So you have request, render an opinion, or reply. So typically, guys, if there are two doctors involved in the scenario of your CPC exam, right? So let's say, for example, this doctor, right? Doctor A asked the help from Doctor B, right? For his opinion regarding this patient's condition, right? So again, for Doctor B, we can code your consultation code, but be aware of the guidelines here because. It will not fall as a consultation code if there is a transfer of care or ownership of care from the other provider. So please, the next types of service is your emergency services. So that's going to be from 99281 to 99285. So basically, if the patient was rushed to the ER and the ER doctor will be providing services towards the patient or an ENM service, you will be coding your emergency services for that doctor who provided the care or the ENM service. So take note that you have your codes 99281 to 285, which is determined by the MDM. No time, okay? It's the MDM you have to check, all right? So it's going to be a bonus if the scenario will give it to you. But if not, you have to calculate it and take notes. There are some guidelines involved in the emergency service like your critical care codes can be coded with ER service, all right? So you have to check your book. I'm gonna show it to you now. So here are some of the emergency services guidelines you can follow and check on your book. Okay? And please take note that you have to check your 99288 for directed emergency care. So please take notes. Alright. Next type of service will be for critical care service. 99291 and 99292. Alright? So the doctor has mentioned here, watch out for other procedures I've done. Because there is a paragraph information in the critical care service guidelines wherein you need to check whether that particular procedure can be coded in conjunction with your critical care service or not. So here's that paragraph where you can find right, those procedures that you cannot code all right, with your critical care service. And take note that critical care service is not that hard to code because all you need to do is to check the time. All right? But please be aware that if your time is not going to be exactly as 30 minutes or one hour, this is the table that you can use for the code that you will apply for your critical care service. Okay? So please take note of that. All right? And the last one that I will discuss for today is going to be your preventive service. In CPT coding, preventive medicine service are represented in the ENM from your codes 99381 to 99429. So you have to check first if the patient is new or established, all right? And after that, check the age. It's not that hard to code your preventive services, all right? You can also code this with your office visit if appropriate. So please ensure that you will put the right modifier, like your modifier 25 towards your office visit, if in case you will be coding them both, all right? In the ENM section, all right, that you need to review, but these are the most common, all right, and the most used ENM service in the CPT book, all right. So in our next episode, we'll be discussing how to get the MDM for a specific scenario that will be given to you, all right. And that's it for today, guys. I hope you learned some valuable lessons about this topic. Watch out for the second episode. I am the medical coding guy. So long, always remember. Without knowledge, there is no power. Have a nice day.